Praise God. We are back. We are back. Oh my goodness. Oh my Lord. I don't know if anyone is watching this and you are as you are blown away as much as I've been. I've been, I am I'm completely blown away. Um I, I don't know anyone else watching this and how you feel right now, but what I have heard over the last one hour that that we've been doing this is is beyond me okay it's it's beyond is this conversation on the heart guess what we did not plan to talk about the heart not none of my questions written down has anything to do with hearts please but the moment we got there i felt an anointing i felt the spirit of god say stay on this stay on that stay on this 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 topic of the heart and my goodness what a time it has been thus far and we haven't we have not even finished it's been so deep it's been so powerful uh, uh, we're bringing the glory to jesus glory to jesus welcome back sis can you hear me can you hear me sis Praise I can't. I'm very God. excited to be back. <laughs> glory to Jesus. I was just saying, there's such an anointing upon this meeting that all the, you, you saw the questions, right? I sent you some of the questions. Nothing has to do with the heart. Nothing. <laughs> but the moment we got there, I felt it in my spirit. I, stay on this. Stay on this. Yes. And anytime God talks to me like that, it's simply because of one person on mm. this, oh, I believe it's me anyway. <laughs> I don't know if it's not me for somebody else watching. You know, mm. that God wants to, to, to do something with or transform their lives forever. And, you know, where we, where we stopped was where you were talking about how people can feel our energy. Our energy is a currency that people can feel and make decisions yes, based sir. off of that energy without yes. our people knowing. You just went to do your thing, you spoke, you wrote, yes. you, you, you whatever. Yes. And then people are making this job. Please, please continue. Glory it's to so Jesus. powerful. I know the other thing that is quite interesting about it. The vibe that we sometimes exude in terms mm. of the energy. There are three things I want to say to you about energy. Please, please. Um, um, I'm going to keep the, the very important one for the third so that we can sort of ex exploit a little bit. The right. first thing is sometimes the energy that you are releasing. This one mm. is a little deep, and I'm just trusting the Lord. So <laughs> mm. The energy that you're releasing and vibing out toward a person sometimes is not directly connected to them, but mm. connected to their kind, right? And what I mean with this is, um, the reason you have to take care of the attitudes of your mind, when we talk about taking mm. care of your heart, we also talk about detoxing. And when we talk about detoxing, it's not just detoxing negative emotions, it's also mm -hmm. detoxing negative conditioning. Mm. Oh, help me, Lord. Ta so <laughs> we all mm. have programming. Mm. Programming speaks to deep-seated perspectives that we have based mm -hmm. on what has been handed to us and which has now become our own frame of reference. As an example, how your mother, for example, continued to say, I want real long, which means that you're about, Yeah, that oh, men have come, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you heard it for such a long time, when you were younger, which is when conditioning is established, yes. when yes. you were choosing the ideologies of the influences... Well, when we were impressionable... Very mm. impressionable. It would mean that you you already became subconsciously programmed to truly believe that men has come right. And what it means is, so mm. when we talk about the heart, we're also speaking about the attitudes of the mind. It then means that it is very likely that whenever you are around men, you vibe out a that... currency that is aligned. Let me tell you, you, we are the ones who are, we are the ones who are. What's the word? shaky moving from this side to that as far as your spiritual constitution is concerned hmm. your spiritual constitution constantly works hard to unify all parts of you into one and what this hmm. means is Let's if you deeper. believe that men hmm. have come your spiritual constitution will continue to work hard to ensure that you are vibing out an energy that pushes men away and you won't even know 
you will not know. So that's what I'm saying. The first <laughs> dimension you must understand about your energy is that it is connected, not always even to what you are thinking in that moment, but hmm. to seated attitudes and paradigms of your mind. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. That is why a lady, a lady can be standing in faith that she's old enough, she wants to be mm. married, she's attending the single seminar, singles and mingles and all of those things. And it will not work. It's not working. I've had people that got on coaching relationships with me and they said, DDK, I need your help. I want to do this. I need execution. And I say, I know you came to me for execution, but as we went along, all that I helped them work on mm. was to uproot conditioning that was creating an energy force field that was mm -hmm. changing everything about their lives mm. so wow. when we talk about detoxing we're also speaking to and i have it in you know immerse in a circle i teach about it extensively there uh, for those who are in my coaching membership mm. you have a responsibility to demolish your negative subconscious conditioning because those deep-seated ideologies mm -hmm. and paradigms that you carry are strong contributors to the mm. vibe that you are flowing out. That you are oozing out. Yes, that is oozing out of you. So sometimes you might not necessarily be angry at a particular person, but if they fit into a file, because we store things as files in our minds, if they fit into a file, your, let me tell you how your mind works. Whenever you store a file up, and you have mm -hmm. a profile in that file. And mm. you associated an emotion with that profile. Whenever your mind sees that profile, it will generate the associated emotion for you. you it's okay, automatic. Okay. So, <laughs> so let me tell you, you have to be careful. All this one that you allow your mind, you allow your heart to become, you know, a dumping ah! of negative emotions. It's going ma, to happen. Ma, 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 I hope you understand ma. what I'm saying. Oh, it's still no, going to I get, oh my, I get it, so I get it. If oh, a ma, person pa, 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 pa. constantly mm. looks at female bosses, right? When you were younger, growing up, maybe the first mm. five, seven years of your career, you had many female bosses who were very hardworking and drove you for productivity. And every mm. time you saw that female boss figure, in your mind, you'd be like, women, all these women, women bosses are bitches. They stress people mm. out too much, you know, because they were trying to force you out of your mediocrity. What will start to happen, even when you grow older and you have your own business, right? Mm. Whenever you see a female leading female figure, your mind notices that file and will naturally generate for you Draw out all the associated emotion that is just like their own is too much. They are like bitches. So you will now be surprised to find that you are hmm. always struggling to be received by female mentors who are older. And you be because the energy is vibrating yes. and they are making decisions. Yes. <laughs> it's so good. So you can go to a mentoring session. And I hope you get me. Put it in the chat if you understand what I'm explaining ah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you can go to a, a mentoring session <laughs> with a female, a female thought leader in her 60s. And you are hoping that she's going to connect with you, right? So you mm, enter mm. into that room. You start taking notes. You are seated with 19 other female entrepreneurs. But you mm. notice that all through the mentoring session, she keeps calling a set of people. You know that thing happens. She'd be like, yeah, 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 her, heart is, is, her heart is vibrating exactly. towards other people. People are just like, what's going on? Why, like, why would you call me? Why are you not seeing me? They will not call me. They're not going to call you. Because without, you. without you saying anything, there's a false currency. There's an energy force field that you are that vibing is... out because Listen to this. Your mind is not against you. Your mind is for you. If you master this conditioning ideology, you will flip it in your favor. Mm. Let me give you an example. How it's working for me. I, I don't have a marketing strategy. Listen to me. I don't have a marketing strategy for my one-on-one -on -one clients. I charge currently, and it's doubling up by January. I currently charge... 500,000, which is maybe 500,000 for a quarter, which is maybe about $1,500 um, mm. at, the, at the current uh, going rate, right? But I don't have a strategy for it. But guess what? I have clients mm. who have paid and are on the waiting list, about nine of them wow. who are on the wow. waiting list 
for when the next enrollment opens and I don't have a slot until February next year. Why? Wow. Is my energy force field? Hmm. I, I consistently visualize the kind of emerging female thought leaders and visionaries that I want to coach. I pray for them. I think about what I can do to solve their problems. problems. I meditate on it. I think about what hmm. can I do to change their lives? How can I help them elevate? Wow. I ask them questions. I offer them services for free. I, I wait to decide in my heart. Before they came. Before they came. So any time that I enter into a conference, and I'm providing an energy that is calling them to me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, every time that I speak, I will have a leading woman come to me and say, DDK, please, do you have any coaching service? I want to work with you one-on-one by themselves. I will just and, you, and yet, you don't do any marketing. I don't market it at all. This is somebody's deliverance. <laughs> this is somebody's deliverance right I'm now. I'm telling you. My I'm God. telling you. And it's the same principle that I used in it's my marriage. I, I, can't, I can't share the details too much because this is not a marriage conference, right? <laughs> but it's the same <laughs> principle <laughs> that I used. Mm. Wow. So, in the first two years of my marriage, I used to feel like maybe my husband didn't love me enough, right? Mm. Because he's a very calm person. So, he doesn't use my own natural love language, which would be affirmations, a lot of words. Do yes. you see? Yes. But... The Lord said to me, let me teach you how to see love, right? Mm. He, started to, he said, you can't look at love from what you want. You've got mm. to look at love first from how the other person understands giving it. Because wow. if you want to see if they give you love, you need mm. to understand what giving love looks like to them. To and them. I started to take note. What does giving love look like to Deji? What, when he's trying mm. to give love, what does he think he should be doing? And the moment I understood that, I started to write. And in just oh. three weeks I, of really observing it, I discovered that basically this guy was spending morning to night trying to show me that he loved me. He was constantly oh. giving me love the way that he knows to give love, right? But he wasn't getting to me because that's not how I know to receive love. I wanted it in a different way. Oh. But the Lord said, you are going to change your the attitude of your mind you are going to change the paradigm wow. in your heart about wow. how your husband loves you you are going to become you would you would step into a deep conviction right so mm. i wrote it out i started to confess it and i started to observe the way he loved me and i would be like this guy's actually crazy about me like mm. did you do crazy about me? like how can someone love another human being like this like this guy is so crazy about me and i would say that to myself not because I was just trying to encourage myself. Hmm. It was the real deal. But I was but blinded. But conditioning your heart. Yeah, but I was... It was really conditioned. Because hmm. you need to teach your heart. You need to teach your heart what to believe. You don't understand. Wow. It's your responsibility. I, I, I get it. You must teach your heart what to believe. Because hmm. you have to believe whatever you, you tell must. to believe. Woo. You have that responsibility. So I started to be like, oh my God, this guy is like really crazy about me. <laughs> I'll be driving to work. I'll be like, gosh, just this morning he has done this. He's only wow. giving me this act of service. So wow. he's trying to just make everything work for you. He's not saying wow. it, but he's all over you. Do you see? If I'm traveling mm. out, he'll take me to the airport. He'll be calling. Don't forget your tag. As if I'm a child, I'm like, I won't forget. <laughs> Don't forget, you are going to mm. get 3A. That is where you're going. <laughs> I'll be like, of course. <laughs> but I started mm. to, on purpose, pay attention to it. I started to say, this is how he wow. shows me that he loves wow. me. Right? Wow. And the more I do that, what has now happened is, over the years, my, my energy that flows out every time is... You know, oh, you crazy about it. I, I rebel in it. Oh, I rage how you love This is deep. You know? And everywhere we go, without words, we don't wear the same thing. We don't do a lot of public display of affection. We don't hold hands. But the first thing people would say is, You're, you are crazy about your wife. And she knows mm. it. And she loves it. Honestly, wow. it's just a vibe. I know that this guy, he carried my matter for head. Has the he started to write words? Not necessarily. Has he really started to 
say it more. So old hands, babe, no. I, no, 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 not necessarily. But you changed your heart. But I've changed, yes. And now and I am. That has I'm changed everything. In his love. Exactly. Oh I'm my God. In his love because the attitude of my heart is now right. And I am now vibing out what is even pulling more of his love in my direction. So much more of it. Like, See, so much more of it. I just want to say so, something. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, talks about how we must not be conformed. In other words, we must mm. not go with how the world does things. So good. But we must be transformed. So good. By yes. the renewing of wow. our mind. Yes, sir. This That's thing it. That you have just shared That's right it. now. Romans 12, 2 is the summary. Yes, sir. We must That's not it. conform. Behave according to what we are getting. Yes. Instead, we walk we must on our renew. Hearts Yes, sir. To yes. Say, oh, my, my. yes, sir. I love the way NLT puts it. Says. NL, NLT puts it like this. NLT says it like this. It says, let God change your life by changing the way you think. Wow. <laughs> Wow. He said, let God transform your life by changing the way you think. What you are just My here God. right now. Phil, that is it. In other words, our life changes the day we begin to realize that our heart is the foundation of anything yes, we want. In yes, marriage, sir. in career, in ministry, yes, in relationship. Yes, yes. Yes. But, uh, I don't know about anybody else watching this, but personally, I've just been delivered. Thank you. Me <laughs> so, so that's Glory the first dimension to energy, oh right? That is the dimension that is almost running on automaticity. So mm. what I'm telling you today is not even that when you wake up, you'll be like, I want to be a nice person today. And you're smiling. And that's how you mm -hmm. change your no. It's deeper than that. I'm, I'm telling you that, I'm telling you two important things, that you have to revisit a lot of your paradigms. And whenever under the light of God's word or light of truth, something is shown to you that is not a mm. way of thinking, stop arguing about it. It's damaging things. Stop arguing wow. and stop holding on to ideologies that were handed to you out of your own parents' pain. Stop it. Hey. Because it's ah. impacting on your vibe. Is important. Mm. Let me tell you one of the biggest vibes that I carry with me, and from my childhood, it's one of the first things that people will always say about me. Right? They would say that I'm wiser than my years, and they would say mm. that I'm very confident but not arrogant. Mm. And that is that's not personality, that's conditioning. My parents brainwashed us to believe <laughs> that we were brainwashed anything. that you can do anything, you can be anything like. I wow. believed it. I believe it. I didn't understand it. That was was great great. Until I got to university. My, my dad would make us take confessions. My mom would make us take confessions. Like, hmm. thoroughly believed in us. Wow. And we were indoctrinated into what it. So I, step out. I remember that when I was going to primary one, in primary school, right? My mom had worn this pretty long, almost pop socks-like, socks for me white with mm. butter leather i was wearing my butter leather um i went to a military school we're wearing the green mili uh uniform you know yeah. i was she had made my hair and as i was coming out of the car she was like you are the smartest of everybody she said all that guess what as we're marching into our class my mother found a way to be the one standing just at the edge of the class uh, I yeah. the she went to, and she does that all the time. I will say what wow. she did again in my university. Stood there as I was going to primary one. I was marching in. She looked at me. She said, almost cool, beautiful girl. Yes. I wow. can never forget the emotion that rushed me. Because I was marching to class. I was feeling like on top of the world. When I was going to, my, to the university, matriculation day, she arrived early brought food, everything, you know, she brought the suits that I wore. As she was wearing the matriculation gown on me, she was like, this university will hear your name <laughs> and it will be for me. She said, you will be such an example that people will be saying, I want to be like Bola Dewey. I want to be <laughs> like Bola Dewey. That's what she said to me. Guess wow. what? When wow. I entered into amphitheater, she did it again, I don't know how. She wriggled away <laughs> into the hall 
and she uh, stood on the at the edge of the stage, around the edge, looking out for me. The moment she caught my eye, she started doing like this. Good job, good job. I was like, who is this woman? She was there. I was even almost embarrassed. Like, what is this woman? <laughs> She's my wife, woman. Hmm. I've seen her this morning on this call. I've seen her. She, she has put a wow. comment in this morning. Wow. That's my wow. mother. I'm telling you. Wow. My, my dad gave me, he sought the first resources to, to the first ministry that I had. It was called God's Great Girls Network. I was how hmm. old? I was 19 years old. He wow. drove to Ife from Lagos to sow that money. I think maybe he gave me 30000 to start wow. that ministry. He said, we are sowing this seed, uh, you know, to you. You are a woman of God. To they a show that you be, they believed in Do your you understand? And that has you you conditioned your heart to believe I that. was brainwashed into believing that I'm truly someone distinguished, that there's something very different upon me. Let me tell Somebody, you, I the first book oh at the mama. age of 12. It was called a Spiritual Adventure. I don't even know what it was. <laughs> you, you, are, you are entering into Dora the Explorer. <laughs> no. Sorry, at the age of nine. Hmm. At the age of nine. Wow. Spiritual Adventure, yes, at the age of nine. And in it, I actually wrote what I called predictions. Things that were hmm. going to come to, to pass. Wow. And my mother kept it for years. Wow. Kept it for years. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying two things to you yes. from these stories. The first mm -hmm. thing is, if you are a parent today, you have a big gift, a yes. huge responsibility to start to go wash and condition mm. the children for greatness. But the second mm. thing that I'm saying is not as encouraging in a sense, but it's just a charge. If your parents spoke down at you mm. and did not really encourage you i don't care how wealthy you are today i don't care that you are married if you are not um making a deliberate direct effort to detox that conditioning you would have an energy unknown to you that would be repelling people Please. that matter stakeholders that are important for you so you ah. have a responsibility there's a book you can start with if you feel mm. like you've not gotten on that journey at all um, it is called The Search for Significance by Robert McGee. That is M-C-G-E-E, -E, Robert McGee. The Search for Significance. The I'm going to type it myself. Yes, please type it for us. The Search for Significance by Robert, Robert McGee. So if you feel like you have not really started your, de uh, um, your um, subconscious reconditioning mm. work, that's a book you can believe you can begin with. It's a really powerful book. Um, if you're a believer and you are happy to take that journey on a really spiritual level, you can consider the battlefield of the mind. Of the mind, just mayor. Life changing book. As well, right? But if you believe that you are already on your journey um, and the condition is not so deep, but you are now ready to elevate to a compelling vision, you must get hello tomorrow by Dr. Hmm. Cindy Train. Hello Tomorrow by Dr. Cindy Train, right? If you are already on your journey, but you've now experienced a disruption that is making hmm. you feel like you're not good enough, you feel that something, you experienced a heartbreak, I would say before Dr. Cindy Train, go for Marshawn Evans and read Believe Bigger. Those are books mm. that I use in my I coaching programs. Power the mind. They will change the way you're thinking. Mm. It's really powerful. It's really powerful. Wow. Do you know I find it interesting, Doc, that when Jesus was preaching uh, about the kingdom, all he was saying was, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And the problem with how we've understood that statement is we've embraced it from a religious point, religious of, point of view. That's really sad. Do you know repent does not mean stop doing the bad things you are doing? That's not mm. what it means. The root word for repent is metanoia. Mm. And what it means is a radical departure from your former thinking. That's <laughs> repent. Yes. Wow. To change the way you think. To embrace mm. a new radical ideology, departure. Radical. a radical departure it has to be radical. from your former thinking. And you know why this is so important to note? 
Mm -hmm. How can the core message of Jesus Christ be so misinterpreted that church people just think repent means don't do the bad thing you are doing. Turn from your old ways. That's, that's not the root word. And theologians say the word repent is one of the um, you know, worst poorly interpreted theological concepts because hmm. of how it was transliterated. Where am I wow. going? If, God, if Jesus kept saying repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, he's basically telling you that if you are going to experience the kingdom, which is mm. the government of God. The, the kingdom of God is different from the kingdom of heaven. God bless mm. you. So repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. If the government of God is going to be established, when in you your life, in your heart, mm. miracles, he's saying that the first step is a radical departure. Radical from departure from how you used to think. Oh yes. my God, somebody has been delivered. So if this somebody season, has been delivered. if we truly recognize that this is such a powerful season, like we started to discuss, and I want, I want you to, I want to beg you, God mm. wants to do something really powerful in your mm. life. I'm not mm. saying it as a pastor. I'm saying mm. it as someone who's currently observing the trends. Let me tell you something that is going on that people might be cynical about, but is a mm. power move of God. Notice that we've stepped into the knowledge era. Mm. Yes, we are. Right? Have. We, we are, are in the knowledge era. And what we is are. happening is that people are having unprecedented flow of counsel, of brilliance. You may look at it and it feels like a normal thing. It's not a mm. normal thing. Whenever a visitation is to be released upon a generation, what God pours first is knowledge that covers wow. the whole earth. Like yes. Yes. The mm -hmm. Do you see mm -hmm. this? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's to show you, and some of you who are listening to me right now, you are mm. yourself teachers, you are coaches, you are authors, you are you are speaking to people. That is because there is an inflow of divine insight coming to yes, you. Yes, absolutely. But if those absolutely. inflows of divine insight will change your life. It is not about knowledge acquired, it's about knowledge applied. So mm. you must begin to take that knowledge and use it to knock out your former ways of <laughs> I like that word, knock out. Mm. Mm. You have that responsibility. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a difficult work, but it's a work that can be done. Right? Mm. There are new ways that I think that I wasn't thinking before. And they're happening wow. in my life now. Yes. So uh, to start to draw it into context back again, you know, we started mm. from talking about energy as, yes, yes. as a first currency that comes from your heart that people mm -hmm. can feel with the heart. But 95% yes. of the time, they don't tell you, but they make decisions. About but they're making energy. decisions. Mm. Yes. So you have to go and listen to the first... Um, uh, life body because yeah, I, I, I covered I some it. ground I it. guys. So mm. Doc has saved it for us, and you need it. So we move from there, and we started to say, and this the is the vibes that we assumed. This way, got deeper, Doctor Sam. When we started to say, sometimes the energy that you are flowing out is not a deliberate action you are taking, but it is the equivalent of the state of your heart and the conditioning mm. of your mind. So mm. if you are finding that, it, and this is one big test, I call it the litmus test for conditioning. Mm -hmm. If you are putting in the hard work in an area of your life, all the things you've been told to do, you are putting in the hard work, but you continue to have results that fall short of the promised outcome, conditioning is involved. Oh, I like this litmus, this litmus test. Please. Please, man, let's say it one more time. One more time. Yes. For those who are at the back. The, those are the back. Okay, so I'm using the mic now. We turned on the mic. <laughs> Please. Uh, mm. If you are wow. putting in Consistently work, getting results. Mm. Yes, you're putting in the hard work. You are working with the principles that you have been taught concerning an area of your life, anticipating a certain degree of result. And mm. in spite of the hard work, you are constantly falling short. Constantly wow. falling short you know, and not attaining to the desired outcome. It is very, <laughs> there's a very high Tell light condition. that conditioning is involved. Whee! Yes. Wow. So you take that area and you simply begin to ask some questions, such as, what do I believe about this wow. area? So it can be money. 
Some people are saving, they are investing, they are reading money books, they are looking <laughs> for opportunities, they are trying to add value, but it's not just really happening. It's and not they, just they, they flowing. The principles are not working. No. Yes, but they work. <laughs> it's conditioning. Let me tell you how serious conditioning is. Conditioning auto-corrects your life <laughs> the exactitude of what you believe. <laughs> it auto-corrects. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know what you're, you're typing... And uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, I love that word autocorrect. Yes, yes, <laughs> it makes total sense. You want to type something, autocorrect yes. changes it to yes. the conditioning of yes. the dictionary of that particular form. Exactly, oh, God. it's very what serious. An apt, apt way to it's talk very about serious. It. It's hmm. very serious, and you know, your mind is not against you. Don't forget, your autocorrect. mind is for you. So, if you get this. Um, this subconscious conditioning and how the mind works, you will see that God designed it to favor you. How God really designed mm. your life is to make success automatic and predictable. That's why he gave us a mind. He gave us the, he gave us the infrastructure of the mind, the way it is conditioned as a technology mm -hmm. that automates results. He gave mm -hmm. us so that our success can become predictable. That wow. as a man thinks, so it is. And that you will continue to make the right investment in your life. Oh, that, 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 that you will believe so much in the God of the universe, who is your father. And you will believe so much in, in, in the success you can accomplish in life that everywhere you go, your life will be auto-correcting to success. That's how we designed it. That's how we designed but, it. But, 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 but life. use it take life. Oh, history. Yes. Failure. Fa yes. Experiences. So you have to ensure that your life is by design and not by default. That one is your life. Oh! Made by tire of a So you let us say, repeat it. Let us say that one yeah. again. Uh, because I'm living by default. To, hmm. to ensure your life is by design and not design. by default. To by live by default. Yes. To live by default is to become a victim of your background, of your parenting, of what you do, serve your parents, all of that. To live by design is to engage the architecture of a master plan and the diligent implementation of, of an engineering model. To look mm. at it and say, what was planned ab initio? Because Jesus Christ said it was not so mm. from the beginning, meaning there was something so from the beginning. You must know what is so from your beginning. Yes, yeah, so. Yes, so then you start the I'm telling you. So. Hmm. Yes. Dr. Wow. Sam, please, please allow me to say this. <laughs> Do you know the true meaning of diligence? The true no. meaning of diligence. Let's go. Let's the true meaning of diligence is for you to reorganize your life and your effort toward matching the original design and intention of God for you. Let me say this. The fulfillment of purpose is not automatic. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> so, so, it's, not. it's not. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. It doesn't settle it. That you hmm. become who God wants you to be is going to be one of the most, in fact, it's going to be the highest, in fact, it's the definition of work. That's hmm. the yes, so. definition of work according hmm. to God's perspective. The true definition of work according to God's perspective is the creative application of diligent effort toward becoming who God wants you who to God be. Who God expected you to be. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody needs, we, uh, somebody needs That's to work. That. That is so there is so, a gap between who yes, we are now and yes, who we are made to be. to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and true you, success is, is closing that and it's work. It's work. <laughs> it's work, sir. Please, it's the real please. work. Oh, my God. And you know why? Let me tell you. We have to be careful not to make what is our gift become our curse. We must be careful oh. to make our blessing our curse. And this is what I mean. You see, unbelievers, they have a recognition that hmm. if they don't play an important role, Unbelievers who make it in the sense of ethnic, material, financial. Yes, they have that recognition that 
if they do not apply themselves to work out the vision in their heart, they are going to live small lives. They know. But you mm. see, there's a problem with believers. Believers have mm. a healthy interpretation of what it means to be blessed and to have favor. Mm. We think that favor means we would we would not put in the world and Don't supernaturally walk. we would get there. And our, pastors, uh, our pastors have added to that problem. It's a disservice that spiritual leaders have done to their people. Because there's a way we pray. If you hear an average spiritual father praying over his assembly, you will worry for us. Because there are imaginary. Whether you like it or not, you are blessed. You must make it. No, 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 sir. No, sir. Ah. No, sir. You may not make it. There's nothing mm. like that. You may not actually make it. Whether you like it or not, whatever you do, even if you don't do, you will. No, no, no. Stop. So we have many believers who have an unhealthy. Who have become lazy. Yes, sir. Who don't recognize? Who are looking for miracles? By the time you, you see, we think purpose is sensational. <laughs> Father, you mean By the time you are face like to face you with purpose, <laughs> let me tell you, a real proof that you hmm. are interacting with an understanding of your purpose is that it should burden you more than it excites you. Oh! Your purpose must burden you before it excites you. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah. Honestly. So if uh, if you stand face to face, face with what God with all these things that you are saying, <laughs> my God, it must I'm be telling you. you. Yes. Oh wow. Because you, you remind me of the words of the preacher. He said, "Yeah, he, he has seen the body God has placed on man. It must I'm be burden us before it excites us." Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <sighs> because the expectations of heaven are really high. And let me tell you something else. I know I'm saying many things, but I'm allowing myself to be led. Let me tell you one of the other challenges of our generation. Our standards have dropped because we have become disillusioned about what greatness really means. Because mm. now that we think greatness is just about if I can have 100,000 followers and um, I can write two books or five books or mm -hmm. three books mm -hmm. and, you know, I can be on Insta Life with celebrities like Dr. Sam. I've made it in life. So we post mm. all those funny posters. I will be mm. speaking at... And you really think that you are doing something. You might not be doing mm. anything meaningful at all. Mm. 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 You might not be. Now, am mm. I saying these things are wrong? No. They can be outflows of purpose. But they can occur outside purpose. In purpose, they will happen. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. outside purpose, they can happen. And they can also they happen too. Wow. Yes. Do you see? Wow. So, so someone said, explain about the birding before the excitement a bit more. What I mean mm. by that is if you are interacting with the assignment God has for you, a few things will happen. Number one, you are going to see that you are <laughs> incapable of accomplishing it. Yes, yeah, so on your That's own. The on your own. The that second thing, <laughs> yes, like mm. I need help. The second mm. thing you are going to see is it actually may make you slower than your contemporaries. Ooh. That's a thing. It wow. may take you on a detour that first makes you look like you are foolish and you don't know what you are doing. People will be like, are you all right? What are you doing? <laughs> you want to you, you are living you want to do this? You want to go and be teaching teenagers. <laughs> you want to have a mentoring program for teenagers. Are you okay? Mama, mama. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the <laughs> third thing that a journey of purpose will do to you is it will introduce you to what is called cashless abundance. God will take care of you, but he will take money away from you first. Oh. Because... Because on the path of purpose is always prosperity. But you need to be schooled so that prosperity will not destroy you when it comes. Wow. Right? So you will lose so, something yes, first. First. So ba, the schooling ba, ba, first ba, 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 is that you will take money off your hands so that you mm. can learn to abound in your abasement. But you will not go Ooh. hungry. You will not go hungry. Your, your bank account may not have sense in a time. But it's <laughs> it's mm. You will take your view by yourself. So that by the time the abundance begins to come, you have mastered stewardship, right? And those mm. who bypass the class, they got into trouble. If you enter a first phase of prosperity without preparation, you either squander it or it squanders you. 
or both? Prodigal son. Prodigal son. Prodigal son. In fact, these three points, we, the prodigal son, absolutely, he thought he could do it on his own. So exactly. The, 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 father, give me all my stuff and let me go. Okay, no problem. Yes. Can he go and, and go? And then he thought that he was, you know, he was looking smarter than his brother who was at home and in the kingdom. And then the yes. third one, he thought he was gaining. But yes. eventually he was, he was losing. losing. Yes. Yes, absolutely, you see. Um, so when you are in touch with Parada. purpose at a growing degree, you are also going to see that you are not the person for the job, that there are mm. broken places in your character. Now, let me tell you this. If you don't realign to the right criteria, how do I say this? Help me, Lord. I want you to hear it. When you are interacting with purpose, you are going to discover that you are not the man for the job, that there are still parts of your life that you and God know that, that is still messed up, right? It's still, and that it's still, it's still it's character. consistent project. Exactly. That you are work in progress. But if you don't have the right criteria for greatness, you are hmm. going to underestimate the impact of your character hmm. flaws in the accomplishment Ooh. of purpose. And when you underestimate it, people will begin to celebrate your gifts, whereas mm. God is looking out for your fruits. Wow. And this is what is getting a lot of people in my generation in trouble. In trouble. They are running fast. They are, there's, there's a pump and paint entry. Everything is just boom, looking so bright and good. People are complimenting wow. them. And there are hashtags of all kinds of goals, vision wow. goals, general goals, wow. beauty wow. goals, all of that. Relationship but, goals. Underneath is a lot of rot. Hmm. And the only reason you allow rot to persist while you are serving an assignment is when you have a broken perspective of what greatness truly means. Truly is. Don't let this generation lie to you. God's idea of greatness is that in following him and doing his will, you become a person you could not have been without following him. Oh, my God. So my God is God. actually after who you become more than what you do. More than... Mm. Yeah. It's the becoming that God is interested in. Yes. Not the doing and the, 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 the earning and the getting. It's the yes. becoming. Yes, wow. sir. Yes. So wow. if, you're on this, your, if you're understanding of greatness and what matters to God is inaccurate, you are going to get into big trouble because the world is going to celebrate you with accolades mm. for what they think success means. Maybe I'm not saying it well enough. Let me, let me say it in this one line. God's definition of greatness is not equal to men's definition of greatness. If you do not embrace God's definition of greatness, you will be accomplishing what looks like success but you could be destroyed in the process. Defective success. Defective yes, success. Defective success. Yes. Men celebrate defective success. Yes. God yes. is the one that celebrates the effective one. Mm. Yes. So this is the assignment that I want to give to you. I want you to go back and do your own personal gap analysis. Yes. I want you to ask yourself this way. The me that I know versus the me that the world knows. What does the gap hmm. look like? Let me tell wow. you what the goal should be. There will always be a gap. But this is what I want you to desire. I want the gap between what, who you are and what the world thinks you are to look like this. I want you to be better than who hmm. the Amen. world thinks you actually are. I want Amen. you to have a relationship with God that is actually <laughs> even deeper than, than, mm -hmm. than what people think it is. That's, that's what your goal should Amen. be. Your life should actually be, it should actually be weightier in the private mm -hmm. than what anyone imagines about you. Wow. It must not be the other way. So if you keep allowing that gap grow, where people think you are all this, but mm -hmm. in your private life, you have a lot of rot, a lot of character flaws, a lot of, you know, untruth and deception, a lot mm. of materialism and the pressure to appear in a certain <laughs> way, that gap is unsafe. It's Very unsafe. unsafe. Wow. It's unsafe. And I beg you to go back 
and you start to really build a life that when people praise you on the outside, God is looking and he's saying, that's even way smaller than who she really is. You guys don't even know my daughter. You don't even wow. know my son. You think wow. he's a worshiper? Have you seen dimensions he has with me? That's who you would rather be. Wow. That's who you would rather be. Wow. 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 My God. Wow. So it's, been, it's been an amazing time. To, to, well, I say tonight because it's night here, but, but it's, it's morning there. And oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, we're going to need like a whole conference. <laughs> to, to to be able to tell, get all that God is taking us through tonight. And this is why I love God says. See, we have our own plan. But when he shows up, yes. our plan just, <laughs> it completely gives way to, to, oh my goodness, glory to Jesus, glory to Jesus. Oh my God, oh my God. Uh, sis, you, there's one more thing um, you, you're going to tell us about the three, um, three ways we exude our vibe. Um, you told us the, the energy we are releasing. Not, it's not necessarily uh, um, to, you know, to maybe to, uh, um, to, to the particular people, but to the kind, they are, they are kind, which is based on our conditioning. Uh, uh, and you have also told us that it's our responsibility to ensure that we leave, not by default, but by design. And there's one more. You said three things. Okay. So the first one I was, you was supposed to be the deepest one. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, live by design and, and not by default. Default. Was just an explanation of everything. Oh, okay. So, we, we haven't even gone to the second one. <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> so, um, the second one is now more about the people, right? Hmm. More about the people. So, we've talked about energy as a product of subconscious conditioning. And there is also energy as a product of directed thoughts, a mm -hmm. product of directed thoughts. So, thoughts, yeah. so energy is like a quantum force that flows out in the direction of specific thoughts. Mm. Do you see? Mm -hmm. So let me tell you this. And if you start to practice it, you are going to know it more. <laughs> Please. Let me Please. say this. It's a bit, it's just a little bit spooky, but it's not. <laughs> Even when people are warm toward me, mm. if their thoughts are significantly unkind about me, I will start to feel their vibe. Mm. I will start you, to feel it. Yes. You, so you, let me let me give you an example. Let me give you an example because you guys feel it too, but you don't know what is happening. What is, let me explain to you. Have you ever had a situation, and I want you to tell me in the chat section, and Dr. Sam, I want you to tell me too. Yes, Have you ever had please. a situation where a person is really nice toward you, and on the outside, you are thankful, right? Because we have two dimensions to us. We have the inner us, and we have the outer us. The outer mm -hmm. us is the social us. The inner us is the spiritual us. So sometimes, yes. the social you versus the spiritual you, they have conversations. And I will explain what yes. I mean. So uh, the social you, who is interacting with this person, what they are saying, the gifts they are giving you, all of that, mm -hmm. you're looking at them and you're like, you are so kind, thank you. But you keep wondering why. Somewhere inside you, you don't feel it's connected not to them. That something is not sitting well. Absolutely. Do you accept yes, that? yes. Many, many. Not, not many not, times. It's not rare. It's the many. Yes. <laughs> Happens to me a lot. They are, they are warm toward me. Oh, gosh. I love you very much. You know, oh, bless you. Not you. you so, yes. They're giving you hmm. gifts. And you can't they're get you. You don't understand it. Yes. Hmm. They're giving you gifts on social media. You are like, this person, they are talking about you. I love you so much, right? Mm -hmm. But... Something is not sitting well. Hmm. But you see, because we are such, we are such fast lane people. If you are going hmm. to really have the best of your life as a visionary, you must really back down on this. Don't be a fast laner. Wow. Wow. You want to create blank spaces in your life so you can hear things that you will not know except you are in introspection. Mm. And the handwritings within your spirit can speak back to you. Yeah? So you just yes. can explain it. So mm. the social you will be in argument with the spiritual you. Listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. Listen very carefully. So you start to argue with yourself like, why am I feeling like this? 
then you will judge yourself and condemn mm. yourself. Because mm. many times we don't recognize that roadmaps are sitting in our spirit to order our steps. So instead of seeing that your soul is an ageless entity and it is wiser than you, it is an elder that can teach you. Instead of mm. recognizing that, thinking about your soul that way, what would you do? You typically judge yourself. You feel like yeah. your own is too much. You are too critical. Mm -hmm. Your own is that's why, that's why you don't have many friends. Anybody that is nice to you know, you're judging them. You are too very suspicious. True. Mm. That's what we very, do, very right? true. Very but true. But this is what is happening many times. Now, some people are extra suspicious. And mm. I, if you sit with me in a different coaching conversation, I can guide you on, on how to separate the difference. But here's what I'm saying. Many times, when there is that dichotomy or that war between the external and how, based on your the emotions, spiritual you and the social you. you. When mm. there's that dichotomy between the social you and the spiritual you, what is happening, beloved, is actually that the energy of that person mm. is reflecting the truth about their thoughts. About them. Whoa! Wow. Many times, what people are thinking about you is not as wow. kind as how they are wow. As you start wow. to trust this inner compass, You'll be sick wow. from many problems, wow. many jagbajanti's behavior. There are people wow. that have tried to cut me for years, and I will just be a wow. loop. I owe you love, but I don't owe you access. Any other I thing. Love, I don't owe you access. I'm responsible my for that. My space. And mm. years down the line, things will start to open up that show that I was right all along. Right. And now my Ooh. husband has come to really believe me and rely on it. You just be like, wow. if I say no, I'm not sure, I'm not feeling it. You'll be like, I go with you. <laughs> is it not you? <laughs> wow. I go with you. Wow. You see? See, this is so powerful because, sorry to cut you off. It has happened to me many times. Well, in my early stages as, um, you know, as a young minister, when I started to, you know, come out and fulfill purpose, and, you know, people would just be nice to me, and, you know, all those people that say, oh, I will mentor you, I'll do this, and you're just excited. But there's always this vibe that is not right. And, you know, I'll be forcing myself to, 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 to get on and to just get on. And, and no matter how much I force myself, it just does not work. So the point that, you know, you know when you're talking about judging yourself, you judge yourself. You know, but I mean, I'm not trying to the person. How come it's not, this thing is not working out? And then after a while, it will be very apparent that I'm not supposed to work with the person. And then I'll be struggling to cut off the relationship. I, yes. I'm not yes. I will not be struggling. I will not. I would have lost myself so to the point that I'm now struggling to get out. And I really want to get out because I can see that this person is holding me back. But it now becomes a major struggle. My goodness. Yes. What a, yes. What a powerful way to understand yes. what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Yes. So for energy, when you are, so just to say it again for you, whenever mm. you are experiencing that war between the social and the spiritual you, it is, it is either the energy they are vibing is birthed from subconscious conditioning, and I hope this is not all too much, or mm -hmm. the energy... No, no, it energy. makes powerful sense. Okay, so when you are experiencing that war and you feel something is not settling, it, it either means they are vibing an energy from their subconscious conditioning, mm -hmm. or they are vibing an energy based on their directed thoughts toward you. Towards you. This is that the you don't even know about. The one that, when it is so strong and this unease about the person is so strong, the energy is coming from their directed thought concerning towards me. Wow. Yes. Wow. So I'm saying to you, this to is now flip it. <laughs> yes. So to flip mm. it, the second level of energy and what I want to say, uh, was trying to share with you yes. is the energy you vibe based on your directed thoughts toward others. You hmm. will not know you are vibing it, but if your heart hmm. is not right, if your thoughts concerning other people are not right, even when you're smiling and you are warm and you're trying to be good, it comes through. And when hmm. you are allowed, you know, lies to be told to you about others, and that's why you guard your circle carefully. When yes. people are gossiping wow. with you about others, you know, you sometimes lose destiny relationships because your hmm. pride pushes them away. And you hmm. don't know why. 
to say, I like you, I'm trying. Ah, I don't know yeah. what's happening. It's because your what's energy going? is pushing them. Because wow. in the inner parts of your mind, you are filled with jargons and filled with junk about other people. And that's why I, I got my heart. I have a confession. I have a confession. There is a, there is, there's, there's a, a, a thought leader about some years back, okay? So I sent the, 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 the thought leader a message to connect, right? And the thought leader never replied me. So I judged that person based on that, okay? That, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe they're just proud or, you know. Do you know, just lately, about three, two, two three, four weeks ago, I connected with this person again. Now, real life, we are speaking on the same platform and all. And I, I was struggling to literally flow because this person was in the same Zoom room with me. The, yes. What you're just saying right now is yes. massive sense. The yes. energy with which my, 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 oh, my belief of him, what I believe about him, what I thought about him, which, may, which most likely is not true, obviously, um, is now what is vibing and affecting my own flow. Exactly. Even your own flow. Exactly. Rapakata, yeah. Just because they're in the same room with you. Yes. Yes. Working on my heart. Mm. It's, it's really powerful. You know, because I'm saying it again and again, our spiritual constitution works hard to keep us in harmony. So you are in the same space with that person and because of the vibe you have had... It's like there's just a passion. thickness in the room. Yes! It's tense in the room. And the third <gasps> thing which I can't really now elaborate on, maybe Dr. Yeah, well, Sam will... Um, we'll another us, one another one. life, <laughs> exactly by God's grace. The third oh, thing is Lord. really now around, oh, um, and, and it's, a, mm. it's a gift. Mm. This one is a blessing. You mm. can rewire your energy as you rewire your mind. And there are two mm. dimensions to it. There's the, there's the spiritual dimension and there's the social dimension. Wow. You see, there is a way you can, there are things I can teach you socially that can help mm. you have a warmer energy wow. after you have dealt with the inner. So the third thing, wow. and you must take that away, and you can start to think about it and start to pray the about it. Right? And you can even mm. just start with a basic um, book, like how to influence uh, people, how to win friends and influence yes, people and influence by Dale um, Carnegie. You can start with a book like that. It's a real gift, right? Mm. So mm. you have, um, it's a blessing. You do have the capacity to rewire your energy. I, wow. I, I helped a wife do that. She had so mm. much accumulated anger against her husband that when she's wow. around him, she's just, she had now become like a, a, a very bitter, mm. unkind person. You see it all over her face. And when I met her, I was just like, she's not trying. She was yes, permanently. <laughs> I met her and I was, we went to school together and I was like, you've really changed. I thank God I asked that question because that was the beginning of our deliverance. I said, you mm. lost weight, your skin is darker. You used to be so bubbly. What's happened to you? There's like a dark cloud and she just oh burst out crying. She said oh the last God. four years, I even thought she had lost maybe family member or something. Mm. It was just that she was upset at her husband. He didn't, you know, and there were issues that were resolvable. They weren't like, wow. he didn't hit on how he did. There wasn't domestic mm. abuse. He was just not understanding. Just strong anything. conditioning rooted. Exactly. Oh. And she became oh really God. deeply conditioned. And over a course of mm. five months, she rewired her entire energy. She's a different person. Even her My pictures goodness. on social media are different. So you can Thank rewire you. your energy. Wow. And hopefully we can get on a, a new call again uh, sometime Amen. soon. And we really talk about that. Oh. Oh, thank you, sis. We have one minute and ten seconds, but we've got to finish here. Oh, I cannot thank you enough. I myself have been delivered. And there's so much that I've learned tonight that I will begin to practice and apply. Thank you very much for being a vessel that God has used for us today. I do not take you for granted. I do not take our relationship and our friendship for granted. I am so honored, so privileged to have you in my Me life. Too. Thank you. Me thank too. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. And to everyone Thank who has joined us today, 
So please help yes. me say thank you. Say a lot of thank you to DK. <laughs> and if you are not following DK, you, 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 you are watching this. <laughs> you better go. <laughs> you better go and follow. See, there are some people you follow so that you can rewire your mind, rewire your energy constantly. I'm begging you, follow this woman of God, not for, don't, Thank don't you. follow for, this for is attention. Thank you, I love you. <laughs> yes, my wife is, you know, don't follow for attention, follow for knowledge, for wisdom. And God will, you know, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Sis, we've got to let you go. Thank you very much. Thank Everyone, you. this is finishing in 10 seconds. Bye-bye. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks for joining. <laughs> See you, everyone. God bless you. Thank you. Wow.